Coming up now on Animal Outtakes, we're getting to know some intelligent sea mammals. We're at Sarasota Sea Lion Preserve. They have lion in their names, but how similar are sea lions to lions? And are you your pack leader? In this episode's Tips and Tricks, we'll discover how to rule. This and much more straight ahead on Animal Outtakes. You won't find wild sea lions along the east coast of the United States. So when we heard of a sea lion preserve in Florida, we had to check it out. Surprisingly, this sea lion sanctuary has been around for decades, and they are just now opening their doors to the public. They are big, playful, and athletic mammals. Sea lions are easy to spot if you visit San Francisco. But in Florida, to get up close to a sea lion, you could come here to Sarasota's Sea Lion Preserve. We have two sea lions here. We have Kitty. Kitty. And Stella. And Everybody Stella. knows Stella. Yes, right? they do. She is the queen here. <laughs> yes, she is. This is a marvelous facility. Thank you. Just out of the middle of nowhere here in Mayaca City, Florida. Yep. How did this start? Um, so it started about 20 years ago, actually. So we've been here all this time. Our boss just recently decided that he wanted to open our doors to the public. Um, he started on the circus when he was very young, um, training animals there, and eventually he moved into sea lions here. The interest in sea lions, what is it? Um, they're wonderful. He actually got a call um, and just asked him if he could possibly house sea lions, some rescued sea lions, and he said, sure, why not? And just like the rest of us, he fell in love with them. They're wonderful. So that's what he's been doing all these years, is providing a lifelong home for our flipper friends here. In a partnership with the Columbus Zoo, there are more than 20 sea lions living on site, each with their own story. Now, Stella, so sweet, so beautiful. What's her story? Oh, Stella has a very interesting story. So. <laughs> At the age of three, she was found on a beach in Puerto Rico. She was beach stranded. Um, we're not sure why. Um, it could have been due to injury or illness, maybe pollution, something like that. But she was very sick, very, very emaciated. Um, and when they found her, um, this is one of the closest facilities to that area that could take South American sea lions. So they called us, and um, now she is a whopping 300 pounds. <laughs> very svelte. Yes. Very svelte. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but she could never be released back out into she the wild. She cannot. Stella has proven that she cannot take care of herself anymore. Um, just like all of the rescues here, we are a rescue facility, so all of our animals come here because they can no longer take care of themselves. Now she's making some wonderful sounds. Is this, <laughs> is this just her normal breathing? Yeah. or That is typical Stella behavior. That is her saying, Zaina, pay more attention to me. I see you over there, uh -huh. and I want you to come over here. Now, I would say she's choking, but she's she not. Is not. She's, she's not. not. She's trying to get some attention. That's and she's getting a little over. desperate over here. So could you please give her a filet of something? Okay. <laughs> oh, we got a nice big squid. Okay. So the <laughs> diet is shot. fish. It is. Strictly and fish. And more fish. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that one she liked. She did. She loves her squid. That is a fan favorite here. Absolutely. And this one might. Oh, Maybe. this one made it. Made it. Yeah. We'll see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, we're back. This is the one, the only kitty cat, and she has a beautiful smile. Yeah. <laughs> you guys show everyone out there. Now you said you're a trainer. <laughs> I am. How do you train these beautiful animals? Um, a lot of fish. It takes a lot of fish, a lot of pa uh, patience, and a lot of um, positive reinforcement. It's all about the relationship that we build with them. It's based on trust, understanding. Um, and they know that anytime they do something we ask them to do, they're gonna get a treat for it. So it's all food motivated, um, relationship motivated, so. But it's all positive. It is, it is, of course. We never make our animals do anything they don't wanna do. Um, if they wanna participate, that's awesome. They're gonna get a lot of fish for it. If they'd rather swim, take a nap, that's fine. They can eat later. It's really up to them. And they like to eat. Staff prepares more than 400 pounds of fish every day. This is where we prepare all the diets for the day. Um, so this is, this is their favorite room. Um, this is where breakfast, lunch, and dinner 
are made. Um, this is our refrigerator. This is where we keep all of their diets for this specific day. Also, their diet for tomorrow. So all of our fish comes frozen locally, um, and we thaw it and feed it the same day. They're eating several different kinds. We have thread herring, herring, sardines, squid, and capelin. And they all serve a different purpose depending on the type of fish. So your herring, your thread herring, and your sardines are higher in calories, so that's like the meat and potatoes of their diets. And then you have your squid and your capelin, um, which is more for hydration, because sea lions don't actually drink water. They get all of their water intake from the fish that they eat. So this is our big boy Bruce's diet. Um, he's eating, let's see, 31 pounds of fish just by himself a day. a day. And we split that into three different meals. So he's eating about 10 pounds of fish every single meal. And we go through every single day and check every single fish that they eat. Um, any broken bellies, any uh, ripped flippers, eyes missing, that's a no-go. So any fish like that gets chum um, because our animals eat better than we do. Um, this is restaurant quality fish, so if you wanted to throw some of this in the oven, you could. Sea lions are some of the most intelligent animals on earth. And here at Sarasota Sea Lion Preserve, they want visitors to see it for themselves with interactive programs. Good. Oh, that's good. Oh, <laughs> look at that. A beautiful turquoise. Look at this. We're on to a great start. This one shows off some of the sea lion's more artistic oh, there. skills. There's a broad stroke. There we go. Why is this so important that we be concerned about these beautiful animals? Because um, out in the wild, marine mammals, not just sea lions, are facing a lot of struggles. You know, pollution, algae blooms, um, things like that. So it's important that we bring people in to actually meet these guys, get up close and personal, because that inspires the public to care. Um, so if they come here and meet these guys, they are more likely to go home and say, I want to make a difference. So they're going to stop using, <laughs> they're going to stop using those plastic straws. They're going to recycle more. Um, it just inspires them to actually take action and try to do something to help these guys out there in the wild. I'm in love with Stella. Oh, yes. I couldn't help but notice how much their personalities and features were so similar to dogs. Each sea lion we met was unique and different. And what was interesting to learn is the vaccines and veterinary care they receive at the preserve is right in line with those our dogs do. Here's some more fun facts about sea lions. Would you smile? Would you smile? <laughs> I don't know what kind of noise that was. Sea lions have teeth to catch their food, but they won't chew it. Instead, they swallow their food whole. And can you guess the animal sea lions usually get mistaken for? Well, that would be a seal. A sea lion and a seal are different. And Stella is happy to point out her species' unique traits. Can we see you? There they are. You can oh. see them right there on the sides of her head. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I said, seals don't have that external ear structure. Um, the next difference is going to be their front flippers. Stella can wave with hers. They're very large and powerful. Seals have very short front flippers. They're about the size of your hand. And Stella's front flippers are so strong. She's going to show off a little bit. Whoa! With that look at that head. Look at stand. that hand stand. Wow! Bravo! Bravo, <laughs> Stella! Yes! Yeah! Lions and sea lions? All right, for me, I don't notice a difference at all. But are there some similarities between these two animals besides a name? Dr. Tracy is getting to the bottom of it. Next. Dante's Den Foundation is continuing the love. Join us Saturday, February 9th from 9 to noon. Make your appointment now for a wellness visit, which includes an exam and general vaccinations, all for one low price. We're also offering tours of Dante's Den and doggy bats for your furry friend. You can even smooch a pooch with our lovable Newfie Benson. Call 941-219-3730 for more information. Help us continue the love. Science is everywhere and it's all around us. 
It's observing the world, forming questions, and the willingness to find the answers. It's something our Inspector Planet does every day, and you can too. Hi, my name is Dr. Tracy Panara. I'm an environmental engineer, which means that I use different scientific disciplines to protect the environment, humans, and wildlife. At Moat Marine Laboratory, I use investigation and myth-busting to answer questions. The first and most intelligent animal that I ever worked with was the sea lion. Now, my job was to clean off the snot that they would fling onto the walls of the aquarium and to stuff dead fish with vitamins. My dad would pick me up from work and make me sit in the back seat with all the windows down because I smelled awful. So sea lions, we know that they're not the top predator in the ocean, but they have the word lion in their name. How similar are sea lions to lions? Oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I've never... Okay. Very good. <laughs> so Bruce is our largest sea lion that we have here in our company. He is a full grown South American sea lion and he is hitting the scale at about two, uh, 720. Um, so he's very large. In the summer, he'll get a little smaller and in the winter, he'll bulk up a little bit and get to close to 800 pounds or so. Right, you're big boy. Is that right? Yes. Ah, winter <laughs> weights. Yes. It's a, it's a killer, man. Ready? Oh. Say hi. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Looking at this guy, I can see some similarities between sea lions and lions. Yeah, absolutely. So sea lions got their name from the males. I'll bring them down here for a second so that we can see them good. So sea lions got their names because the boys have a big old mane on their neck. Yes, And they, they also do. have a little bit of a sea lion roar. Good, right here. Good boy, ready? <laughs> I'll let him eat his fish and then we'll see if we can make some noise for everyone. All right, big boy. Hey, come here. You want to say hello? Can you sing it? Sing it. You can do it. Sing it. Oh, oh. Sing it one more time. All the way. Good. Sing it. You can do it, buddy. Ready? Sing it. Good. One more. Can you say hello? Sing it. Good boy. Oh my Good job. gosh. He really barrels like a lion. Yeah, he definitely has a little bit of a rumble down there, and you can see his mane is starting to dry out a little bit. It'll get all puffy, and he'll get nice and fuzzy. Good. Wow. So we know that lions can swim, but not that fast. Not as fast as these guys. Yeah. But the really impressive thing is their agility. Yeah, they're, they're very, very pretty out in the water. Um, they can do flips and they can porpoise. All of this helps them move faster and helps them get away from predators when they're out there in the wild. Yeah, I guess that that's a big difference. That they're <laughs> the prey out in the yes, wild and yes. lions are the predator. Yes, absolutely. So we have to think of lots of things to make us move and get out of the way faster, right? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. They have the ability to do what's called porpoising. Um, most people will be familiar with that, with how dolphins move through the water. Sea lions do the same thing. So they'll come up and down, and that helps them gain speed because they'll take their breaths when they come up yep. every time, and then they don't have to stop for a breath of air. That helps them to gain a lot of speed out there in the water. Kind of like the butterfly swim. Yeah, kind of. Which is actually Michael Phelps' <laughs> favorite, right? Can Key show off a little porpoising? Good. Hup. Hup. <laughs> I think she found a fish. <laughs> yeah, yep, she did. Good, can you show us some porpoising? There we go. Hop, you can do it. Beautiful. <laughs> Good so job. These guys have lion in their names. They do. But their closest land mammal relative. It's actually a bear. So they have the same skeletal system as a bear, which means in their front flippers and their back flippers, they have every digit, all five digits. Oh. Um, they have wrists. Um, very, very similar to a bear. I would say that our sea lions are very, very smart and they know us very well. They definitely know individual people. They know, you know, what they do with each person, what favorites are. Um, while intelligence isn't really easy to be measured, um, they are very, very smart animals, I would, I would definitely say. Um, so while we're working with the sea lions, there's certain things you'll realize that some of them learn quicker, um, some of them take a little bit longer, but our girls work on husbandry behaviors, which is them volunteering in their health care. They can open their mouths, they can show off their eyes, 
show off their flippers. That helps us take better care of them by them offering those things for us. But they are also a lot of fun to do fun things with. Um, we have taught our sea lions how to recycle, which is really, really important, and we hope that a lot of people can start doing that more um, well, to help yeah. protect their wild counterparts. So they can recycle, they give kisses. Hi. They're super smart. Yeah, there's those kisses, right? Yeah, very good. Um, sea lions do recognize verbal cues and hand signals. So they pay attention to things that we're saying as well as watching what I'm doing with my hands. Well, yeah, it's amazing because humans, we think that we're the most intelligent species on the planet and most of us don't recycle. So it's pretty yeah. amazing that these guys can. They are, they're pretty amazing. And Kitty can show off her smile. Where's your smile? <laughs> yeah. So she, she's listening to what I'm saying. That's awesome. To catch the words that she's familiar with. That is awesome. Right, and you can show your smile with a hand signal. <laughs> it's a smile. Good, very good girl. Um, I noticed their teeth, their gums are actually black. Yeah, so that's a plaque that's really healthy. It builds as they get older and it helps protect their teeth from the fish that they're eating keeps them nice and strong. So most of their time is spent on the land. Yeah. But as we go through climate change and our pH is dropping in the oceans, how might that come into play with their health? So a lot of the things with like pH that mostly it affects are their eyes. So sea lion's eyes are very sensitive. It's actually the first thing that gets affected um, out there in the wild. Um, so when the pH changes, that's gonna change how their vision is in the water and they're gonna go blind sooner, um, they're gonna become prey way easier, um, not being able to look at their surroundings. So that plays a big, big role into the longevity of each of the sea lions. Right, it'd be interesting to see if over time their whiskers start getting longer as an evolutionary yeah. role to start having more sensory if their, eye, if their vision does decrease. Yeah, it's definitely know, something it's that's possible. Um, or they, you know, start to stay on land. A sea lion yep. can be on land as long as they please. Um, they do not need the water, which is also a misconception. Um, people assume that these animals have to be in the water. During mating season, they'll stay out for months at a time. Jellyfish, cuttlefish, sea lions? Come to find out, again, it's just a name. There are a lot of similarities between sea lions and lions. They have whiskers and they roar like lions. But the one similarity that will always be is that they are both amazing animals. And remember guys, anyone could be a scientist or an engineer with some passion, hard work, and innate curiosity of how the world works. For more information on Sarasota Sea Lion Preserve, log on to their website. There you can check out some of the interactive programs they offer. Coming up, who's the boss in your home? Trainer Paul is here with some great tips. Dante's Den Foundation is continuing the love. Join us Saturday, February 9th from 9 to noon. Make your appointment now for a wellness visit, which includes an exam and general vaccinations, all for one low price. We're also offering tours of Dante's Den and doggy baths for your furry friend. You can even smooch a pooch with our lovable Newfie Benson. Call 941-219-3730 for more information. Help us continue the love. Over 90% of the seafood that is coming in to this country is raised in areas of the world that don't have the highest standards. And so our approaches are aimed for two things. One is to help feed the world. The second is to do it in an environmentally friendly and sustainable way.
Being the master of your domain, the head honcho of your castle, are you? This is an area I need to work on in my home with my dogs. Trainer Paul says making sure your dogs view you as the boss is essential to everybody's well-being and sanity. Paul, when we're in our own home, of course, we have a tendency to spoil our dogs. Every one of us. You too. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah, you you're do. Right, you're right. But there has to be an establishment of who's the top dog. And that's really us, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, absolutely. how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you start it from, from, from when they're, they're puppies. And it, it comes from training, from obedience training uh, 101. Um, when you get your puppy and you start training them and you, you put them in a, lay, in a, in a plots or a, a lay down, or sit, um, and you work from there, you, you will physically have to put the puppy in a, in a sit down or, or lay down from, you know, from the beginning. And then you work on distance and you call the dog to you and then you go to that spot, put him in a down and you go to distance and then you go further and further away. But you're establishing dominance by putting the puppy in a, in a down. Um, so when you come home, you know, further on down the road, when you come home, uh, the dogs are all jumping and hollering and wanting to get at you. But you don't allow that at your house. Uh, rules of, of you know, being a dominant male is or dominant female. Uh, you call the dog to you when you want them, when you want to pet them. It's not on their terms. It's on it's on your terms. Um, and people get that all mixed up. That you know, my dog wants to come and see me. And I I get it. I get it. But on the other side you want to have that control where you can say no not right now I'll when I'm ready I'll call you over to me and then then I'll love on you and pet you and, and you're not you're not um, alienating them you're just giving them rules to follow but you're, let's you're still it. gonna give them the love that they want <laughs> just when you're ready for it not well, on their terms let's face it we come through the door you know <laughs> you're gonna and, split. If, and if my herd of dogs does not come up to me I'm hurt they're going to come up to you to a certain point after if, when you when you've established the fact that they're not going to they'll all run up to you but they're not going to jump and, and and hoot and holler until you invite until you say it's it's okay that's what you're looking for you're looking for your dog to they'll always come up to you they're, they're always going to run up to the door and tail wagging and and being happy but it's on your terms when it's what it, when when you want to pet them and that's just it goes hand in hand with obedience um it just it it helps for when you're out in public, it helps when your people come over to your house and they, you don't want the dog jumping and, and all that. It's just, if there's rules or if there's foundations, it's better for the dog. It's easier to train a dog um, if they have those sets, those values, those, those foundation to begin with of it's on your terms, not on theirs. So when I walk through the door, I've got to share the love. Here's what you have to do. <laughs> I could never do that. Never do that. But I have to establish myself yes. as I'm the top dog. Right. Right. It's on your terms. Just like when you're feeding it when you from a puppy, you should when you when you get the puppy and you're feeding the puppy, you should put your your hand in the bowl and play with the food and, and move it all around and all that. And keep doing that as you get older because I mean some dogs, as you know, we we found out here, um, you know, there some dogs come to you with food aggression problems. And that's a way from you start young, just feed them, you know, in the bowl. It also, it goes hand in hand. You keep doing that from the time they're little till the time they're, they're grown. Um, it establishes dominance that I am in charge. I'm feeding you on my terms. If I want your food, I'm gonna take it from you. If I want, I'm gonna give it back to you. Right. They get it, they'll, they'll understand. But I'm well-trained too. Yes, <laughs> you are well-trained. <laughs> <laughs> Being the pack leader is what you want to strive for. Knowing your pack and consistency is key. We'll be right back.
Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, visit our website, dantesden.org. We hope you had fun and learned a thing or two along the way. We'll be back here again next week with even more animals and some wild adventures. Until then, thanks for watching. We love you, Stella. We Where's love your you. Where's your smile? Where's your smile? Good girl. <laughs> <laughs>